Good evening. My name is Christine Wells, Director for Teaching and Learning. The following webinar reflects an update of the work completed and currently in progress by the GATE Cluster Steering Committee. This update will be presented by members of the committee via audio recording. In the spring of 2014, several concerns of various stakeholder groups, along with a large number of changes and updates to the gifted and cluster program, prompted the Board of Education to request a comprehensive program evaluation of gifted, talented, cluster program services within West Chicago District 33. The internal program review is currently being overseen by myself and members of the steering committee. Members of the committee include Karen Apostoli, Jennifer Borsma, Steve Brugman, Peter DePaz, Lilani DePaz, John Foos, Matt Garling, Kathy Grogan, Chuck Osborne, Josh Rollins, Terry Roman, Margaret Ryan, Terry Shade, Janet Sikma, Don Wendt, and David Wollenzine. This committee has been charged with several tasks which will result in a long-range plan. A call to action was given to the committee who has worked hard to gather feedback from various stakeholder groups to, one, evaluate the state of gifted education policy and programming with regard to Illinois rules and statutes, evaluate the state of gifted education policy and practice with regard to best practices, evaluate the degree to which existing programming is meeting the needs of students, and provide feedback and suggestion for improvement to programming. Over the past four months, the committee has gathered information through a, a variety of existing data sources, both qualitative and quantitative. We've conducted interviews and hosted focus groups. We have sent out surveys to stakeholder groups that included parents, teachers, community members, administration, current and previous students, as well as a review of previous and current programming occurring in District 33 and surrounding districts. Tonight, members of the committee will provide you with an update on our current findings about work already completed. A final report will be provided to the Board of Education in early June with recommendations from the steering committee based upon our findings. The plan will be articulated in a one to six year long range action plan. Good evening. My name is Margaret Ryan, consultant to the steering committee. I began teaching in District 33 in 1972 and from 1994 through 2009 I had the privilege of designing and growing gifted services in this district. I live in West Chicago and raised my family here. My three daughters attended District 33 in 94. Since retirement I have conducted training for the State of Illinois, the DuPage Regional Office of Education, and Illinois Association for Gifted Children. I am a member of the organization organization's Diverse Gifted Populations Committee, and at our first two steering committee sessions I provided an overview of current research, best practice, and law in reference to gifted education. What you see on the screen is part of our conversations from our first evening. The two definitions, both the Illinois State and the federal definition as it applies to gifted students. I'm Janet Sikma. District 33 Orchestra Teacher and member of the Steering Committee. On February 9th, we continued our learning as a committee by attending the 20th Annual Illinois State Convention for Gifted Children. The three-day conference included workshops for parents, teachers, and administration, with opportunities for networking, learning, renewing, and reflection. The parent workshops included sessions on nurturing creativity at home and at school, and living with intensity. Both were presented by Susan Daniels and Michelle Kane. These sessions included a variety of strategies that could be used across subject areas to develop divergent thinking, creativity, and problem-solving skills. The presenters discussed and highlighted how to identify characteristics of gifted students, particularly in very young children or second language learners. They also included several strategies for parents to use at home with their children and answered questions about specific behaviors and concerns from the parents in attendance. Teachers and administrators attended workshops on diversity, disadvantaged children, program development, STEM, and Common Core. Conference attendees had the opportunity to interact with top researchers Jim Curry and Jim Delisle. A panel of experts offered discussion and feedback on topics of high interest to the steering committee, including low-income, high-ability learners and the myths of giftedness. 
We also had the opportunity to review resources for students from over 26 exhibitors. The IAGC conference attracts state and national experts presenting on topics of interest to beginning and experienced teachers as well as parents. Embedded in the conference is the opportunity to network and engage in over a dozen roundtable discussions on a variety of topics. By attending the Illinois State Convention for Gifted Children, parents and teachers in attendance have the opportunity to network, learn, and discover the latest trends in gifted education with peers, and most of all, to share our passion for the gifted learner. My name is Karen Apostoli. I'm a current GATE teacher and a previous and current parent of both a cluster and GATE student. I also serve as a member of the steering committee. In February, the committee began to investigate our long-term program review as we looked at our reach into high school. Several members, parents, teachers, and administration sat down with assistant principal of Community High School District 94, Alistair Scott. Topics discussed included identification of students, programming, and services offered and gifted. Students entering District 94 are assessed using the ACT's Explore test. The Explore test is given to students in English in November of a student's 8th grade year. Placement in high school classes is based primarily on Explore test results. When placing students into District 94 Honors programs, a guideline matrix is used with students' Explore scores plus teacher and parent recommendations are used for placement. It is anticipated that District 94 will continue to use ACT's Explore test for placement and identification over the next several years. Specific services for gifted identified students are not offered. This is very typical for most high schools who do not offer separate programming for gifted. Instead, gifted students are often serviced in the Honors and Advanced Placement, or AP, programs. A copy of this document has been shared. As freshmen, students entering the high school have the opportunity to take honors courses in English, math, science, and foreign language. In 2015, District 94 will open up an honors course for social studies. Typically, students enrolled in honors courses will continue on to take AP sections in their junior and senior year. AP classes are college-level studies. Students who register for these classes may opt to take the qualifying examination given in May. Mr. Scott shared that most of the honors teachers are also the AP course instructors. AP instructors must take a two-week summer course to be certified to instruct AP classes. Additionally, students applying for AP credit to ha have to pay fee a fee. Last year, we had approximately 95 students enrolled in our 8th grade GATE cluster classes. Students in cluster normally take cluster courses in all content areas, language arts, literature, math, science, and social studies. Of those 95 students, 71 students continued on to Honors English, 82 students entered into Honors Biology, 54 students entered into Honors Geometry, and 12 of our GATE math students entered into trigonometry. Honors and AP classes are currently not in place for the arts in District 94. The steering committee would like to thank District 94 and Alistair Scott for taking the time to meet with us, as well as providing us with very helpful information that we will use to meet our goal creating a continuum of services from elementary to high school and beyond. We also recently received feedback from the District 94 Honors teachers who have given us feedback on student preparedness. It is estimated that about 10 to 15 students do not continue on to our feeder school, high school, for a variety of reasons. Some students graduating from District 33 do go on to other local high schools such as Wheaton Academy, St. Francis, and even the Illinois Math and Science Academy. It was important to the steering committee to review the identification, services, and programs of these other schools. Both Wheaton Academy and St. Francis offer an extensive range of honors and advanced placement courses for students, including advanced programming for students with high ability in the arts. Entrance into each private school varies, as does the criteria for placement and honors in AP classes. Additionally, one of the high school programs offers a specific master program for students 
who wish to extend their math and science knowledge. Both schools also offer students additional advancement opportunities by taking online courses. IMSA is a public tuition-free residential high school. Its advanced college preparatory program enables academically talented Illinois students in grades 10 through 12 to reach extraordinary levels of achievement. Located in Aurora, typically students enter the school after the ninth grade year, but entrance in ninth grade does exist. In the past, we have had several District 33 grads who have gone on to IMSA from D District 94. As part of our work as a steering committee, we made it a point to seek feedback from a variety of stakeholder groups, one of those being former students involved in programming for Gifted and Cluster. A former student survey was crafted with the help of the steering committee and gate teachers. Responses were collected using SurveyMonkey. In total, 27 students responded. Communication to encourage completion of the survey went out via the help of social media, District 94, as well as being posted on the district website. Survey data was reviewed and analyzed by the committee and used to identify themes and trends in relation to program improvement, beliefs, and areas of concern. Common themes present in the data from former GATE and cluster students included being involved in GATE allowed them to be with like-minded peers and in turn assisted in the development of lifelong lasting friendships. Suggestions for improvement included increased challenge and rigor for cluster and provide an expanded continuum of services for all content areas. My name is John Foose and I'm a parent of two, soon to be three children in the district. I have one student involved in the dual language program and I'm also a member of the steering committee. To investigate the problem in the board identified areas, qualitative and quantitative data were collected from multiple sources including surveys, focus group interviews, classroom observations, and document reviews. Focus group interviews and questions were created and conducted by Educational Consulting Research Analytics. ECRA interviewed administration, teachers, and current students. Administration and gate teachers were assigned a time to report for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Student interviews took place at Lehman Middle School with gate identified students with both the ECRA interviewer and Christine Wells. Three focus group sessions for teachers took place after school at three different buildings. District teachers were invited to attend any location of their choosing. District 33 conducted parent focus groups with two dates for Spanish families and two dates for English families, all at night. Invitations welcoming parents and community members to attend were communicated via email, posted on the district website, and sent out via phone messenger. They were also linked to both the town and high school websites. Focus group results were given to the steering committee by ECRA. The committee has reviewed the findings and has included a copy for your review. The survey questions to parents, teachers, and current and former students were drafted by the steering committee and aligned to national standards and designed to evaluate and cover the experiences relative to the program charter key areas. Program design, program identification, vision and beliefs, communication, and staff development. A parent survey was sent out to families in English and Spanish. The survey was created and results were collected in SurveyMonkey. 116 parents responded to the survey in English and 16 responses were collected from parents in Spanish. The survey asked parents to respond to questions that were both multiple choice and open-ended comments. Questions for the survey were drafted based upon recommendations of the steering committee and as well as taken from national standards on designing services and programs for high ability learners, a publication of the National Association for Gifted Children. Communication about the parent survey went home to all District 33 families via email, phone calls, and printed material. The responses to each of the parent surveys provided the steering committee with important and relevant data. The survey data was reviewed and analyzed by the committee and used to identify and complement already identified program improvement needs, note existing strengths, and honor parent concerns. Some common themes presented in the parent survey data included increased programming, earlier identification, increased rigor of the middle school cluster program, increased staff, and accommodations for special needs. A copy of the parent survey, results, and themes have been included for the board review. Teacher survey was sent out to all D33 certified staff. The survey was created and results were collected in SurveyMonkey. 
123 certified staff responded. Survey questions were created to allow teachers to provide feedback using both multiple choice and open-ended comments. Questions for the survey were drafted based upon recommendations of the steering committee and as well as taken from national standards on designing services and programs for high-ability learners, a publication of the National Association for Gifted Children. Communication about the survey went out via email, was posted on the website, and was sent to principals to communicate with staff. The responses to each of the teachers' surveys provided the steering committee with important and relevant data. The survey data was reviewed and analyzed by the committee and used to identify themes and trends in relation to the program improvement, existing strengths, and noted changes or concerns expressed by the teacher. Some common themes present in the teachers' survey data included improvements to identification criteria, increased program service options, providing services at home schools, not busing students, support for the classroom teacher through training and coaching, and strategies for differentiation for high-end and low-end students. A copy of the survey results have been included for your review. A student survey was crafted with the help of the steering committee and gate teachers. The survey was given to current students in middle school cluster and fifth grade math students. Responses were collected using pencil and paper and were added to SurveyMonkey for ease of interpretation of results. Thirteen questions were given to students and 259 students responded. Survey data was reviewed and analyzed by the committee and used to identify themes and trends in relation to program improvements, beliefs, and areas of concern. Common themes present in the data from current students include creating a program for gifted dual language students, starting services at an earlier age, increased rigor of cluster classes at the middle school, supporting the social-emotional needs of students. A copy of the survey results has been included for your review. Good evening. My name is Matt Garling, and I am a parent of both uh, students at Wegner and Lehman Middle School. I have one student involved in the GATE program, and also have a third grader and a kindergartner. The kindergartner is actually receiving some speech uh, assistance from the, from the district as well. So let, let me uh, talk briefly and follow up on Mr. Foose's comments uh, with talking about how we analyzed and gathered the data. Uh, first off on coding the data, a as you heard in the detailed analysis from Mr. Foose, the steering committee collected over 500 survey results and over 30 students, parents, administrators, and teachers attended the focus group sessions. The team spent a considerable, considerable amount of time undergoing a process called coding. Coding is the process of combing the data for themes, ideas, categories, and further comparison and analysis. Coding the data makes it easier to search the data for us to make comparisons and identify any patterns that require further investigation and will also assist us as we move forward to make recommendations. Our coding was based on uh, themes, topics, ideas, concepts, terms, phrases, and even keywords that we found in the individual analysis. The process we use to code and identify themes has been given to you and you've heard some of the key themes in Mr. Foose's comments. We will continue to review the survey and focus group data as we move forward in the development of a long-range plan, but more on that in a minute. The surveys that we sent out to parents, teachers, and students were drafted by the steering committee and designed to evaluate and cover the experiences relative to the program charter's key ideas, which are program design, program identification, vision, beliefs, communication, and staff development. When the results of the surveys are reported, they often include a statement like a margin of error. As with, most, um, as with most surveys, they are typically designed to provide an estimate of the true value of one or more characteristics of a population, but are subject to sampling error and outliers. Out outliers simply meaning respondents whose responses are far away from the true value or one of the, the main characteristics of the population. So in this study, um, we did have margin and sampling error were present, as well as outlier response. For example, focus groups for parents and students were to be random, but some focus groups resulted in a convenience sample based upon, based upon the availability of families to participate. Surveys for families were only given the option to complete uh, the survey using an online tool, which may have allowed respondents to complete the survey multiple times from different IP addresses. The committee was able to recognize and reflect on the respondents' feedback to allow for better data analysis by allowing the question objectives to drive our analysis. And all these limitations aside, we really believe the data from the surveys and the focus groups is accurate, especially with the recurring themes that showed up in multiple formats and for multiple groups. One of the key themes present within the survey as well as the focus groups is an overall misunderstanding of terminology and definition of terms. Terms from respondents in both the survey and focus groups use terms such as gifted, talented, and cluster interchangeably. 
The steering committee is currently working to establish an agreeable glossary of terms, which will derive from the National Association for Gifted Children research terms, and will also integrate these definitions into our program charter. A second key theme present in multiple groups was the need for early identification and varied instruction options to target multiple levels of advancement or learning. The steering committee is continuing to evaluate these areas as we conduct site visits and further discussions. And thirdly, based on the focus group and survey feedback, a third common theme uh, reflected in the data is a lack of communication and understanding of the program's goals and services. Once the long-range plan is developed and shared with the Board of Education and stakeholders, we believe a yearly review and update to the long-range strategic plan should be completed. A brief yearly review is one way to evaluate past communication and provide for current and future communications. My name is Terry Roman, Principal of Wagner School and Principal Representative to the Steering Committee. Looking ahead is not always easy to do when you're caught in the everyday management of educational programming for any subgroups of students. Like successful business, successful schools invest resources in crafting a vision and fostering values because they recognize the community culture determines how and why people work towards, together towards excellence and services for all students. Nevertheless, to chart our journey efficiently and effectively, we must have a destination in mind. What is our program's vision? Vision statements are rooted in beliefs and are from the heart, expressions of the program's hopes for the future. It will be the job of this committee to ensure that those from the heart statements collected from stakeholder groups, which would include parents, teachers, and students, is taken into consideration when crafting our vision statement. How will the needs of gifted and talented students be met within this broad framework is a tall order for our committee. A mission statement is defined as a broad statement of the unique purpose for which the program exists and the specific function it serves. Mission statements are more practical than vision statements. Mission statements align philosophically with the broad educational goals of the school system and reflect an understanding of state laws and policies. Creating and developing a program mission and vision will continue to be an ongoing process of revision, fine-tuning, and discussion that we anticipate will remain a working draft and it will not take shape for us until the end of our meetings as a steering committee. We will use our vision and mission to drive our three to six year action plan. Ultimately, it will be the responsibility of the steering committee members, administration, and teachers to ensure that the mission statement comes to life. Over the next six weeks, we plan to meet about three more times to conclude our work as a steering committee. Committee next steps include conducting site visits to surrounding school districts to review various programming models for servicing gifted and talented students at both an elementary and middle school level. Additionally, we will continue to shape our program mission and vision. At the conclusion of our time together, we will use all of our learnings from survey results to focus groups to site visits, conversations with our high school, and other anecdotal data to articulate a long-range one to six year action plan, which will be shared with the Board of Education. The long-range action plan will make recommendations for program improvements and changes to gifted and talented services in District 33. Communication of the plan will start with the Board of Education, but will continue with a series of community updates for parents and teachers about recommended changes for program improvement. Further questions about tonight's update can be directed to myself, Christine Wells. On behalf of the steering committee, we would like to thank you for listening and for the investment we are making to building a better program for gifted and talented students in West Chicago School District 33.